Hello, and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With from Medical Updates Online. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Anna Murphy about how pharmacists can improve the care of patients with asthma. So please, could you start by introducing yourself? So my name's Dr. Anna Murphy, and I'm a consultant pharmacist based up in Leicestershire. Can you give us a brief overview of your role, what your current job involves? I've actually got a very varied role. I'm very fortunate in that way. So um, I'm very clinical. Um, Patients are extremely important to my role and what I do. And so I have three outpatient clinics at the hospital a week, uh, two severe asthma and one interstitial lung disease. But I also have an integrated care role. So I work out across the ICS and work with virtual CAPD um, MDTs, and also do a lot of training, education for GPs, practice nurses, community pharmacists, as well as teach at universities as well. First then, focusing on asthma, could you remind us what is asthma? What's current thinking? If you look at the textbook, asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease. Um, and, you know, we know asthma largely starts, you know, perhaps in children and some children go out of it as they get older. Some will continue. And some people, they find that the asthma comes back later in life. Or well, indeed, for some people, asthma actually presents much later in life as well. But fundamentally, in most cases of asthma, it's really where your immune system is being overactive. It's sort of reacting to environmental triggers that the patient breathes in. So what you get is an influx of inflammatory cells, largely probably eosinophils, which cause inflammation in the lungs. And that's key for us to understand as pharmacists and key for our patients to understand, as that is fundamental to how we manage asthma. Mm -hmm. Mm. And Is it still the case that there are three deaths a day in the UK from asthma? And if so, why? I'm very sad to say that that is actually supposed to be true, Christine. Um, You know, they report that probably 1,200 people die of asthma each year. And the sad um, uh, thought about that is that actually probably 90% of those people have factors that could be preventable. So if we actually got care perhaps better, they're they're prescribing the right medicines for them, give them action plans, make sure they know what to do if they have asthma symptoms, then we can probably prevent a lot of those deaths. Of course, the challenge is, is we can give people this information, but how do we engage them and motivate them to take on board the advice that we give? So there's a number of aspects with asthma in making sure that they understand you know, what medicines perhaps they need to take. For instance, it's vital that people with asthma are prescribed, can inhale appropriately, they're inhaled corticosteroids. We try and encourage people not to over-rely on their salbutamol, so their shorter-acting beta-2 agonist. Um, and, And getting those messages across is really, really important. The National Review of Asthma Deaths in 2014 actually showed that nearly 40% of people died, used more than 12 salbutamol inhalers in a year, and about 80% of people who had died were using less than 12 of their inhaled corticosteroids a year, which of course is what you would expect a patient to be doing. So these are the fundamentals that we need to look at to try and prevent people from dying of asthma. Mm -hmm. 